Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new On February 20th, 1962, that's been a long time ago, John Glenn orbited the Earth in Friendship 7. That was the capsule that he was on, blasted off from Cape Canaveral. Uh, what a spectacular time. What an exciting time, but a very uncertain time. Nobody knew on the launch pad what was going to happen. At liftoff, nobody knew how far he was going to get. There was a lot of uncertainty going on. As he began to orbit, and it was just a capsule going around, his autopilot went out. It was all up to him to fly the spacecraft. He would go on to fly it three times around the planet and then come safely back to Earth. There was so much uncertainty on that day. <laughs> if uncertainty could have been taxed, we could have wiped out income tax, property tax, sales tax, and just put a tax on uncertainty, and we wouldn't even have a national debt. You know, we're going to be coming back together as a group. 
physically all together. And I believe that our leadership has thought a lot of things through and we got a good plan. But, you know, something is not going to be accounted for and there's going to be some, oh, I didn't think about that. But don't worry because he's with us. God hasn't promised to take away all of our problems, stop us from suffering. As a matter of fact, he's guaranteed that in the Gospel of John, just before he's about to be crucified, he's given the last moment instructions to the disciples. And in John chapter 16, verse 33, he says, I have told you these things so that you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. But he said, have peace because he's overcome the world. Even though there's these troubles, have peace. Wow. Have peace. We will suffer, but he's beat it. We stick with him. We're sticking with the winner. He's overcome it. It's that simple. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. In the presence of my enemy. In the presence of my enemy. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. Louder than the unbelief. Louder than the unbelief. I raise
Hey everyone, here with Alex Netsley and wanted to talk to him for a few moments to see how he and Ashley are doing and then also ask him about something that he experienced here lately. So first, Alex, how are you guys doing? Uh, we're doing pretty good. Um, so obviously things changed, but um, Ashley is still working um, up in Mount Pleasant in a different capacity as a nurse okay. up there. Uh, I'm working over telehealth right now. As a okay. Counselor, so. Okay. So Ashley's an, a nurse and you, you are a, a counselor. That's kind of a broad term for it. Yep. So it's officially called a licensed professional counselor. Okay. That's my title, but. Okay. Um, you are also in the national guard. Yep. Yeah. And recently, uh, you were called along with others in the guard to help out uh, at the, the tragedy at, at the, in the Midland area uh, with the flooding that occurred. Um, so you, I was talking to you the other day, you had about one hour notice. We staged in Bay City um, where we kind of got everybody together and figured out what's going on. And then we drove into downtown Midland and that's where my unit was. Okay. Um, and so. Uh, on Saginaw Street in Midland, where um, a large chunk of the residential area, it's kind of suburbs down there by the hospital, um, a little past it is where I did most of my work out there. So, And what were your first thoughts? What, I mean, can you describe that, the emotions or the feelings? Because none of us ever know what we're going to feel like or think when we see what, tell me first what, what you saw that first um, would describe, Hey, this is really an awful situation. What did, what were some of the first things that you saw? So yeah, rolling, rolling into the downtown area. Um, it, it was kind of bizarre because a lot of, a lot of it where we were staged looked normal. People were driving around. Um, you could tell things were, different because a lot of people looked a little displaced. Um, but as soon as we pull out of our staging area, we were there with firefighters, MSP, DNR, all the emergency workers. Um, you drive down the road a mile and it's, there's a lake in the middle of the city. So um, yeah, it looked very bizarre. There was uh, people out, you know, videotaping stuff, taking photos. Um, and then there were people people wanting us to try to take them out to their houses. And, mm. um, so yeah, it was definitely um, something new that I never thought mm -hmm. I'd. What time of day was this that you were arriving on the scene? So we arrived in Midland at like 5.30 AM, six ish, I think. Um, but we worked all through the night Tuesday to get up and ready. Um, and then we left. We got to Bay City at four and then headed out at five. But mainly what we were doing is aiding people who weren't able to get out on their own. A lot of people got out on their own prior to all this, um, but a lot of um, older individuals, a lot of people uh, we were helping out with like their pets, stuff like that. But um, yeah, when I was heading down one of the streets for a pickup of a, um, two gentlemen that the MSP picked up in the boat, they, uh, there was a kid in like a life raft, just kind of like paddling through. I wasn't quite sure what he was doing. Um, but some people didn't want any help because they, they felt like they had it under control if they had personal boats. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it's definitely, definitely bizarre. So how high did the water get? Um, so where I was at, it was, probably roughly like five feet to 10 feet, depending on the terrain. But for flood purposes, um, I think they measure it from like the river and it was, it hit, it hit 38 feet, which 30 feet is considered um, flood levels. And how many people were, were doing what you were doing? How many people were helping out? Um, so MSP, I worked with probably, I mean, there was 20 MSP at my station. They split the city up into three zones and, um, there was hundreds of 
you know, um, like first responders, a lot of firefighters, um, some DNR, uh, but uh, the firefighters and the state police did a lot of the pickups. Um, and the DNR have some specialized boats that can go through um, water like that. Have you ever looked at yourself as, when you do things like this, as doing God's work? Um, probably not in the moment. It, it just kind of, you know, it's just the job that they've trained us for. But I guess in retrospect, it's uh, both when I look back at my life and see the careers I ended up with, they're both helping professions in a way. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that way. Way back when, when you decided to, to get into this career, God had things like that day in mind that you helped out and you did provide a lot of help and God was, um, you were, you were God's servant on that day. And we thank you for what you do and, uh, for your service to our country. And I'm glad that you were able to be there and, and help out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's a, it's a very rewarding mission. Um, most stuff we train for is war, but these are the types of things that the national guard specifically is for that disaster relief and nice to actually help people. Um, yes. And how much longer do you have in the National Guard? I have two years and um, 10 months, I think it's around there. So um, I'm coming in on the end of my second contract. So, so how long have you been in totally then? Ooh, uh, Roughly? Yeah, I think nine nine years and some change now mm. joined when i was 17 wow well thanks again for what you do and I'm glad that you were there to uh to help out and we look forward to seeing you back at church whenever we can get back mm -hmm. all right yeah. thanks so much alex thank you up world, a fallen world. The real problem isn't what's wrong, it's our perception. Sometimes it's how we perceive others, sometimes it's how we perceive ourselves. We forget who Jesus is and what he's done. He's provided a way. Sometimes, sometimes we accept a perception it's truth. And that's messed up. Then we think of Satan as the problem, as the issue, as unbeatable. And that's messed up. Satan is beatable. We know that. The problem is beatable. The issue is beatable. Because we know who's already overcome. Hey everyone, I'm here with Jen Davis and uh, wanted to check on Jen and John is speaking today, uh, but I wanted to see how Jen is doing and also kind of ask her a little bit about um, a physical struggle that she has had during her life. Anyway, Jen, first, how are you guys doing? We're doing pretty good, getting settled in and excited for some of these restrictions to lift and uh, it was really great getting with the junior hire last night, junior hires and then senior hires tonight it'll be good right so. now that the restrictions have been lifted a little bit you guys are able to meet in very small yes. groups but you're doing that and that is that's very very good for 
for you all because it's such a hard time anyway when you move and then when you move and then go into something that the world has never experienced before, let alone you guys. Yeah. yeah. Jen, uh, uh, let me ask you um, to, to help us understand what you deal with physically um, and just kind of some of the things that, that you go through on a daily basis. Okay. Um, due to a thyroid sickness starting 20 years ago, plus 20 plus, um, it's been rough finding energy to get through the day some days. So fatigue, the brain fog. Um, today I'm, I'm having a day where I'm pretty tired and trying to find my words is, is a struggle because of brain fog. Um, so some days are better than others, but this is one of those down days. I, I was just telling Nate, this is one of my broken days. I, I feel the brokenness. Okay, sure. And Nate is your son that you're yes, referring to. Um, so is this something that you were born with maybe, and it just kind of showed up later on or how, how did this yeah, happen? Um, yeah. Thyroid disease is generally past as her, they say hereditary. Um, and I do know my mom struggles with it. Her parents did too. So, um, born with it, I, you know, it's hard to, hard to okay. say, is it a genetic thing or whatever, but, um, okay. there, are, I think the different things that affect it made it a larger struggle for me than other family members. Now tell me what brain fog is like for you. Um, sometimes I get my words backwards. Sometimes I can't find the right word in a sentence. Um, I had a chiropractor call it uh, salad words. Like you just throw these random words into a sentence. And you don't even realize that's what you've said. And I've had people look at me at funny, namely family, um, and say, and I say, what did I just say? And they repeat it back to me. I'm like, yeah, that wasn't at all what I meant. <laughs> so, um, there's some of that and yeah, just trying to make decisions on days like this is not a good deal. <laughs> And why is it that brain fog goes along with the, the problems with the thyroid? Um, some of it's an adrenal relation, adrenal glands. They sit on the kidneys. Um, the thyroid regulates a lot of the other body functions. And so when it's not healthy, which mine's gone, um, it makes other things hard to function. And the adrenals try to pick up where the thyroid's not functioning well and then they get tired and then it all just lends to the brain fog. How often do you have bad days like today? Um, probably at least a week out of the month. So I would say at least seven days a month just in general, sometimes okay. a little more, sometimes a little less. Not in a row, but just seven days here, here and there that happens. Or? Sometimes in a row. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sometimes I get, it's just a bad, bad week. So yeah. And, and then you need to, during that time, sleep more. You probably feel, do you feel depressed with it? Do you, emotionally is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so the physical exhaustion, you know, when I want to go and do, and, and John's a doer, he, he, he likes to be active. And so um, there's just been times that we haven't been able to go and do something because I'm just worn out. I'm, I'm done. And sometimes toward the end of the day, I can feel, I, I, I've told him, I said, I'm wilting. That, that's my word. I'm just, I'm running out of steam. I'm just spent. So. Are there medications that are helping or. Or, yeah, or um, I take thyroid medicine okay. three times a day, actually, which is rare um, or unusual. But my doctor did things differently. But he, we had tried a medicine about a year or two ago. No, it's not even been a year yet. Um, and I was on it for four years, and we just kept increasing it, increasing it over a four-year period. But it never helped. And so I'm back on a familiar thyroid medicine, and I think it's helping. But um, I'm kind of trying to regulate it on my own right now until I get established with the doctor. And so it's been a struggle. And because you can't 
you don't know when this is going to happen. I'm, I'm sure that there have been, uh, it has really bad timing <laughs> where it hits yeah. on things that days that you want to do things or times you want to go to church and you feel awful. Yeah. Usually I don't miss church. It's been a rare occasion that I've stayed home and rested when I was too tired for church, but Sunday afternoon naps are almost a necessity. Hmm. So do you have yeah. pain, physical pain with this also? Yeah, it's basic mild muscle pain. And I yeah, hmm. woke up just achy this morning. Leg muscles, arm muscles, just achy. It's it's gotten better. I went ahead and took some ibuprofen <laughs> and that helped. What um I mean, now that we know that that you struggle with this, uh, I'm I'm sure it would be nice for you to just be able to say to someone, "I'm having a day," and and that people would just kind of understand. I mean, what would we do though? Just kind of, just sort of obviously pray for you, but just kind of let you be whatever you're being until you feel better? I mean, is there anything other than that we can do for you? No, that's, that's a really good. Um, <clears throat> recognize if I'm saying I'm having a bad day, I, I can't think through words. It's, it's hard today, actually. Um, I'm getting there, but mm -hmm. uh, just to recognize I might not make sense mm -hmm. and just know that it's because it's one of those days mm -hmm. or there's been times I've had to cancel plans mm -hmm. or leave something early just because I am I just don't have the energy to go mm -hmm. and, and do what I want to do or spend time with people the way I want yeah, to. Sure. Jen, thank you for your time today, especially on a, on one of your really bad days. I really appreciate it. I know that <laughs> this though will help us to understand you better. And it also helps all of us just to realize that every single person has stuff. We all have stuff yeah. that we deal with. It may look different. It has different names. It, it, it uh, causes us to react differently right. toward life, but we all need to be sensitive toward the fact that everybody's got stuff they're dealing with and we need to be sensitive, careful, and understanding around people. So thank you for helping us to know you better and that we can pray for you. And uh, so now I'm going to back off, leave you alone, and hopefully you can get some rest. Okay, Jen? <laughs> yeah, thanks. All Appreciate right. it. I'll, I'll let you go. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. We'll see ya. Bye.
So whenever Moses led the people out of Egypt and they went over, they were going to go up to the promised land. They sent out the 12 scouts to go out and check it out. <laughs> they went up there and they said, we have went into a land which you sent us to and it does flow with milk and honey. <laughs> wow. They had saw what they were told they were going to see and Caleb said, we should go up and take possession of the land for we can do it certainly. <laughs> but then the 10, the majority said, whoa, 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 whoa. All the people, they're great size. They're giants. Well, I can tell you everybody looks like giants to me, but for them, they were seeing them as too big, too powerful. They said, they seem like grasshoppers in our eyes. Why do we, the children of God, keep drifting backwards and forgetting God's promises? We all have this grasshopper complex. All we see are giants and we fear. We see our problems as too big to handle. You know why? Because we try doing it without God. This much is for sure. God has not led us this far just to drop us off and say, hey, have a nice life. God has led us this far and will continue to lead us no matter what our perception is of these giants around us, no matter how much we have this grasshopper complex. But we need to get beyond the grasshopper complex. We need to see truth for what it really is. We need to let God be God and us be his followers and just follow. Yeah, we need to just follow. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Wherever you're at today, would you just worship with me? Worship the Lord. You the only one I need I bow all of me at your feet I worship you alone You have given me more than I could ever have Wanted and I want to give you my heart and my soul. Let's try that again. You are the, you are the only one I need. I bow all of me at your feet. I worship you alone. Given me more than I could ever have wanted, and I want to give you my heart and my soul. New part goes like this, and you alone, my Father, and you 
alone are good And you alone are Savior And you alone Do that again And you alone are Father And you alone are good And you alone are Savior And you Are things in your life a mess? <laughs> well, let's talk. What giants and uncertainty are you up against? Maybe economic, maybe uncertain work, maybe a bad marriage, or some other bad choices. What are those giants? Is it bitterness of being wronged, stolen from, fear of failure, fear of failure repeating itself and thus frozen? Maybe it's a hidden addiction that's just zapping you. Maybe your emotions and spiritual energy are gone. Maybe it's failing health. Or lost dreams. Or just life out of control. All can cause anxiety. When Paul wrote the book of Philippians to the church in Philippi, He's sitting in prison, most, most likely in Rome. And he says these words, Do not be anxious about anything. This is a guy on death row saying, Don't be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. <laughs> and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Don't be anxious, but in everything, with prayer and petition, give thanks. Take it to God. His peace is going to transcend everything. He's going to guard our hearts, our minds. It sounds easy. But when you're in a tough spot, it's hard to remember that. Let me tell you about some of my uncertain times. Some of my giants. You move to a new place, you start a new job, and this COVID thing hits. It's like... You're on a bus, you get up to change seats, and all of a sudden the bus driver, boom, slams on the brakes and you go flying. You're not sure what you ran into, what happened. You just know you're in this jammed up, weird, strange position. You're trying to figure out what has just happened. You're trying to figure out, is everything still attached? Am I in one piece? 
the last thing you have is peace, God's peace, because you're so focused on yourself. Praise God for a wife, a senior pastor, and some new close friends that help you pull things back together, help get you seated back in that seat. You try to figure out <laughs> what's going on. And the more you focus on other people, on helping them, the easier it gets because you're not focusing about self. When I focus on others and not on me, that's a lot of how I got out of the mess and I can find God's peace in the middle of the mess. I told you back in 1962 about John Glenn going into space and all the uncertainty. Back in 1963, this place was built. A lot of uncertainty, but a lot of hope. A lot of excitement. Then some years later, that part over there was added on. And then some other changes were made. And there was a lot of excitement. Well, now we're coming back together again on this soil. NASA's launching a whole new space vehicle this week from our own soil. We haven't done that in a long time. But God is doing something new. And it's exciting. But let me tell you, some things will be different. Come here. You see this snow shovel? You see that salt? Ice melt? What worked in just March, a few months ago, won't be working in June. Times change. We need to adjust methods, but stick to the message. So I am so excited, as I know you are, to get back together to see what God has. Yes, there's going to be uncertainty, and our leadership I think they've done a great job at thinking everything through, trying to plan for everything. But there will be some things that nobody foresaw. But that's okay, because I know who's in control. We're going to get through this. He's promised not to leave us, not to forsake us, to always be with us. And that is the hope that we have. So I look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Thank you. Find your love. I will find your love and hold it in our heart. And in our heart. When stars go out each night. When stars go out each night. Remind us where you are. Let this be our Shadows fill our day. Let shadows fill our day. Lead us.
us to a place, guide us with your grace, to a place where we'll be safe. A world where pain and sorrow will be ended, and every heart that's broken will Reaching to the sky We ask that life be kind And watch us from above We hope each soul will find Another soul to love Like every child, just like every child, needs to find a place. Guide us with your grace. Give us faith so we'll be safe. Needs to find a place. Guide us with your grace. Faith, so we'll be safe.